Hello. Hello and welcome to Curzon Living Room, a season of live Q&A events on Curzon Home Cinema and tonight also on the big screen at Curzon Soho and Curzon Bloomsbury. My name is Sean Fay. I'm a writer, editor and presenter who focuses on issues of feminism, mental health, LGBTQ issues and particularly on transgender issues. Tonight I am in conversation about Little Girl with director Sebastian Lufschitz and if you're watching with us live we're taking your questions via comments on YouTube, uh, Twitter and Facebook. Our Twitter handle is at Curzon Cinemas. Please use the hashtag, hashtag Curzon Living Room and we'll read out as many as we can. Sebastian, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, I just wanted to start by saying I think that uh, Little Girl is a beautiful film. Um, it's a film that certainly is very striking both in terms of its uh, subject matter and the way that that subject matter is dealt with. Um, namely, that it is a film about a transgender child and something that particularly in, in many societies, but particularly in, in the UK, uh, where most of the audience will be watching from, uh, it remains a controversial topic. Uh, and this is dealt in a very different way to the kind of sensationalism that this topic is often dealt with in the mainstream media. I wanted to just ask you initially about how you arrived at the idea of discussing this subject about transgender children, about a child whose gender identity is variant from the sex they were assigned at birth. Um, and I was wondering if you could just explain how you came to arrive at deciding to make a film about this topic. Well, hi, Sean, and hi, everybody. Um, well, all started with my meeting with Bambi. Bambi was one of the first French transsexual in France. And I met her a few years ago and I did a portrait film about her life. And I remember during a conversation with her that um, she said to me, Bambi was born uh, in 1935. And she said to me that at that time in Algeria, where she was living, when you felt as a little girl, but born as a boy, uh, it was just impossible to make understand your situation and just to speak about it. But she said to me that when she was five, it was so clear for her that uh, she was uh, a trans child, you know. Of course, the world at that time didn't exist, but for her, it was she was she felt that she was the opposite sex. And so I've realized that this feeling of your identity could appear very early in your life. And I said to myself that it could be very interesting just to find a family and a kid who was in that situation today, not during the, not in 1935 when Bumby was, was a kid, you know, because of course uh, I don't have any pictures of that and I, and I couldn't tell that story. Uh, so then from, from that discussion with Bumby, um, I tried to find a family and a kid and this, this is how it, it happened. So, so for context for the audience who may not know, Bambi um, was a real life trans woman who you had a, a working relationship with because obviously one of your films is a documentary film which films her and her career. And as you say, um, through discussing her early life, you realize that obviously trans identity is something perhaps different to sexuality or to uh, lesbian, gay, and bisexual identity is something that emerges earlier in childhood. And then from there, I decided to kind of look at it in the here and now um, compared to when she was growing up. I was wondering, in the girl Sasha, um, who this film is about and her amazing family, how did you go about finding them um, and finding a family that was so willing to let you in to quite a personal and deep experience? It, I was just interested to know how you found them and, and how you built that relationship. Well, it was it was a bit difficult first because, of course, I had this idea to find a family and, and this kid, but then concretely, um, it was so difficult just to have an idea. So how to find them? 
And then I've realized that um, because you couldn't go to school and just ask, you know, for such a kid, that was impossible. So I had this idea to go uh, on forums where some parents are have they having discussion about their situation with kids, with trans kids. And so I made a, a, a kind of a announcement that I was looking for a film, a family and a trans kid. And this is how I met the family first. And because the mother of Sasha answered me and she said to me that uh, she was interested in the idea of a documentary film just to make people understand what she was uh, living with Sasha. And so she asked me if we could meet first, only me and her. Mm -hmm. And her, the first meeting was very moving because she was so sincere, like in the film, you know, she was a wonderful person, but very moved. And, and also she was struggling so much for so many years with this situation. And I don't know, I loved her immediately. And I think it was <clears throat> the same for her. And, and then she said to me, okay, next time you come, uh, I will present you Sasha and, and the whole family. And I remember the first day when I came in the house, the feeling I had was really special because I really felt that the love, the love was everywhere. This family was so, uh, I don't know, they, they had this very strong feeling of love and, and caring and you could feel it, you know, it was really there in the hair, in the room and it was like a, a kind of fairy tale, you know, and, uh, and I remember Sasha was looking at me, she was very discreet and maybe a little bit afraid to, to meet me um, and so and then little by little, uh, she came and see me and, and, and we had a talk. Et voila. Thank you. Um, and interesting, this ties really well into a, a, a question that we've had from YouTube from Zoe Playden, um, which uh, she asked Sebastian, like Bambi's generation, which included her UK friend, April Ashley. And I don't know if you're aware of April Ashley, but she was probably the first prominent transsexual woman in the UK and that she was a model and in 1961 one of the tabloids she had a very successful modeling career and one of the tabloids um exposed her past and basically destroyed her career in, in an instant but she she became probably the first prominent transsexual woman in Britain in the British media so Bambi is and April Ashley are are probably contemporaries so these are very different lives um and they had a very different experience of being trans and Sasha. But as someone that's worked with someone of Bambi's generation and someone that's worked with Sasha, what parallels, um, Zoe is asking, do you find between them? What do you think is the same, the unending or unchanging aspect of the subjects that you're dealing with, even though Bambi and Sasha were very different ages and different generations? Well, first, what you need to know is that Bambi and April knows each other because April came to Paris and worked in, in a cabaret in Paris. So she met Bambi there in the 50s or 60s, I think. And so they were uh, very close at that time. And uh, about Sasha and the difference between the period of Sasha, I mean, today and when Bambi or April were a kid, it's... I think it's a question of visibility. Um, in, in the time of Bambi, it was quite impossible just to say, just to say it out loud, you know, because you could have so much problems with uh, the police and also with the people. I mean, the society at that time was very hostile to, uh, to trans people so much. I mean, today, I'm not saying that today is totally different because it's still very difficult and you could see it in the film. I mean, you have this family full of love and comprehension for Sasha, but when you look at the outside world, you see how difficult it is, especially with the school or with others uh, institutions. 
uh, because they don't understand, they don't want to accept the situation and uh, they're just afraid. They're afraid for themselves, for the institution, but also with the repetition of the school and maybe what the other parents might say. And so in the doubt, let's say, they prefer to, to refuse, you know, and, and sometimes to expulse the, I don't know if the name is expulse uh, the kid of, of the school. And um, so it's very difficult. And the mother of Sasha was struggling for many years um, with the school, for example, but also with, with the dance uh, lessons, you know, in, in the, um, because Sasha was, I mean, she's obsessed with dance. And, mm -hmm. and the institution where she's having some lessons for, for dance um, refused her as a little girl. So, I mean, <clears throat> my point is to say that today it's still so difficult, but the difference is today you have families who want to, to be out, you know, just to say it out loud and to be visible and to fight against all the hostility and the impossibility to live like every other kid. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, I, it's interesting that you mentioned Sasha's mother um, because one of the most interesting themes I think for me that came out of the film was motherhood. And I think knowing as I do, as someone that's worked and interviewed a lot of trans children in the UK and I think and beyond in the US, and, and I think it's universal, is there is an anxiety amongst all families with a trans child in the family about acceptance. But I often think it falls as so many things do about families and parenthood on motherhood. Um, and the mothers of trans children tend to be treated worse if people are being bigoted or blamed more for their child's difference. And I think what the film encapsulates so well is how Sasha's mother is really trapped in, <laughs> in many ways by the fact that she has to be the strongest advocate for Sasha. But um, clearly at the start of the film has a lot of guilt about her own difficulties with Sasha's identity at the very beginning. Um, but she arrives as this amazing force, and I think she's really the heart of the film. And I was wondering how your relationship with her developed and, and kind of whether or not you found her an impressive person and what she thinks of the film in its final form. Well, I was impressed by the whole family, actually, because the film is about the whole family. And of course, especially about uh, Karin, which, which is the name of the mother of Sasha because like you said, she has a force so, so strong and so deep and she could fight everybody for Sasha and for all of her kids actually, but especially with Sasha. And, uh, but I was also amazed with the brothers and sisters of, of, of Sasha because they are so mature. They understand perfectly the situation for me. they they have built a kind of shield around Sasha. And I agree. Yes, it, and it's so beautiful. And you see this uh, so, solidarity between them. It's because of Sasha. They, they understand that they, has to, that they have to be mature and they have to protect their sister. And also that they have to accept that probably all the intention and, and, and the caring um, are very uh, concentrated on Sasha, which is not so easy to accept, you know, when you are a kid, because you want the attention of your mother. You want uh, some time with your mother. And of course, Sasha is also very demanding, but you, you, you need to take care, especially about all the issues that the family uh, has to, to deal, you know? And so for me is, I mean, the maturity of the kids are also amazing. Of course, there is the force of the mother and she's the center of the film with Sasha. But for me, the whole family, the portrait of the family is very, really extraordinary. And I was really amazed during uh, the, the shooting of their, I don't know, they, they are beautiful people. I agree completely. I thought I was really struck by Sasha's sister, 
who is older and herself um, probably in her early teens, I would say, and uh, is kind of uh, very beautiful and very non-conforming in many ways herself. And her brother, who's so articulate about how he explains Sasha's transness to people, and I thought it was very touching too, where the clinician says, well, you actually, if people haven't met your sister um, before, you don't actually always have to explain uh, her transness. And obviously that's something that's been uh, foisted on him perhaps by society, but I thought that was really nice. I'm just going to come to a question from Simon from London who said, I love the film. The cinematography is so beautiful. I wonder if you could talk about how you see the cinema cinematography feeding into Sasha's story. Uh, well, the thing is, uh, for me, a documentary is a film. So the grammar of the film is really important. It's not um, a reportage, you know, it's not, uh, it's a film. So I, I was very attached of uh, the mise en scène, you know, of the film. So that's why I, I wanted to choose a scope format to use uh, um, a score and to be very attached in a way to the grammar of the fiction. Uh, but the content is totally it's it's uh, totally a, do a documentary. So and I like the mixture of it, you know, that you have a form like a, a uh, like a future film, but um, but the content is totally uh, the reality, you know, and because it creates a kind of uh, a beauty, of course, but uh, a, a, a lyricism. It's difficult for me to say, to, to say that in English. I'm sorry. Sometimes, you know, I uh, I don't have the words. I mean, no, I think I think you. I honestly, I think the lyricism. I think that makes perfect sense, Bastian. I think that that does. Don't worry. I think that translates perfectly into English. Yes, and so I, I like this this mixture. You know, just to really to say this is a movie. You know, it's not only a news that you could see uh, on uh, a specific subject. You know, it's more than this. It's a story, it's it's like a future film for me. Thank you. Um, and I, I was interested because I think one of the things that's really interesting about the film is it flips a lot of what, perhaps from news stories, and again, I'm talking about in Britain, I think we've discussed before, but I think in Britain, the, the, the culture around trans children and the narratives around trans children in Britain have been very, very hostile for a long time. Um, and I, I and I don't think this film <laughs> would be received in the same way, perhaps, or be even be made in Britain. Is um, what I like about this film, and I, I don't know if this was something that's intentional, is that what the narrative often that maybe many people think about a trans child, someone like Sasha, is that she is confused, or she is distressed, or she is upset by her gender identity. But what we see in the film is Sasha is not confused and not really upset by her gender identity. What she's often upset by is adults' reactions to her. Um, and is that something that you fully knew you wanted to represent when you started filming? Or is that something that you learned more as you were filming about the difference between how she felt about herself and about how adults felt about her? Did you, did you feel like you became more understanding of trans people via the film or was it something that you kind of knew was the case and wanted to showcase? Well, for me, what was very important is to be sure that Sasha was aware of um, how important is it to make that film and because she's going to be exposed, you know, her and her family. And Sasha said to her mother, I want to do the film because I know there is other kids like me and I know that it's, it can help. You know, and she was so aware of that. She has, I mean, she has a very strong maturity of all the difficulties that, I mean, of course, that she knows uh, in her daily life. But also, I remember when I was shooting the film, I have two memories very strong. The first time when I came into a room, which was a kind of secret room, because nobody went there except her brothers and sisters, but she had never invited any friend because it's a, the room is full of girl stuff, you know, girl toys. And she was so afraid that someone could discover that she was having such a room. 
And remember, so the first time when I came in and I said to her, okay, now I'm gonna shoot a scene with you just playing with your toys. And she said, okay. And I know that it was a kind of big event for her because it was the first time that someone from outside the house was going there. And then, so I prepared the camera and, and the shot. And then she just sat uh, on the bed doing nothing. And I said to her, don't you want to play with your toys? And she said, well, no, because normally when I play with my toys, I'm just alone in my room and you're just there. And I said, yes, I know, but you know, we, we're doing a documentary film, so you're supposed to do something. And she said, well, I know, but no, because you're there and I don't want, you know, and if you want to film me, you just film me um, like this, you know? So she was, she, she didn't want to play a character. She didn't want, you know, to do something that was a, uh, not natural for her. And I remember also an, another moment at the very end of the film and the shot is in the film actually, she was playing on her bed and we were preparing the camera. And then she had her head just upside down. And when I saw that, I saw that it was so beautiful. So I wanted to, to, to film it. And during the shot, you could see that the look of, the, the eyes of Sasha is looking just straight to the camera saying, I know you are filming and I'm aware of it and I'm okay with it. You see the changement, you know, that she, it's a yes. And, and there is another moment I remember when she was playing um, another time and I was asking her to play with the Barbie and, and, and she didn't want to do it. And so I asked her a second time and she said, okay, let's do it. And then after one minute, um, she stopped, you know, and I said, what do you stop? Because we, we didn't finish to film. And she said, because I'm, I'm fed up, I don't want to keep on. And I said, just could you do it for like one minute? And she said, no. You know, Sasha was always, you know, very, frank you know and she she never did something she didn't want to do and she was always aware of what was going on with the camera and she always wanted me to film her real life she didn't want to be an actress or to do something that wasn't her and for me that's, that's amazing important yeah i think that's amazing and i think one thing that's amazing about the depiction of the film and the depiction of sasha is because often trans children are spoken over because of adult anxieties i found there's a very powerful scene towards the end of the film where she's in a clinician appointment and asked about her ballet teacher who has perhaps unwittingly but perhaps not <laughs> i've done something very humiliating to her publicly in in terms of her gender and she's asked whether she feels sad or angry and she's obviously very reluctant to give that answer on camera. And it's very powerful when a mother says, it's okay to feel angry because I'm angry. And she says, I feel both, I feel sad and angry. And I think the reason that's powerful is because for an eight year old child who is trans, often we don't, when we talk about trans children, we don't attribute any <laughs> uh, emotion to them. And it's just about how adults, or how their parents feel, how their teachers feel, how the doctors feel. And um, it was very powerful to have that space where even though she was reluctant and nervous and afraid because there was adults and a camera there that she was able to say, I'm angry. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask, because we're, we're running, we're, we're in the last 10 minutes is that um, Asha Samroy from uh, YouTube has asked, Sebastian, how do you feel making this film has impacted or changed you um, as a filmmaker or as a person? Well, <laughs> I mean, it was, I mean, an amazing experience just to meet these people. I'm not saying that as a filmmaker, just as a person, just to meet this family and to meet Sasha and the generosity and the trust they gave me for me was something very big, you know, and I knew that I was, I had a big responsibility, you know, to doing the film to do it in a very gentle way and, and with a lot of respect, but 
I can't film someone that I don't like, you know, because I, I need empathy. I need to be, I don't know, I need to understand them and to be with them, you know. And I try to, with the camera, to find a way to be with them, not on them, but with them. They are not a subject for me. They are people. And I, I want to be a part of their life, you know. And this is what I'm trying to do as a filmmaker. And the experience was very, very powerful and very strong. And of course, I'm still in contact with the family. And, um, and I remember that uh, a few months ago, Karin, the mother of Sasha said to me, you know, now she has been accepted in the school. She's not so much obsessed with all the, the clothes and, and the toys of a girls. Now she, she's like in between in a way, like she, she's okay to play football, but also to play with, with the dolls, you know? And she's not obsessed to, in the revendication of who she is and about her identity. And this, this is something that I love, you know, that she could be who she wants, sometimes a, a mix of, um, sometimes she has the desire to do something uh, that she was doing when she was a little boy, when she was three, you know? Everything is mixed. And um, so I think it's cool. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's one of the, the key misconceptions about, and it, you obviously captured Sasha at a certain point in her life, is that they're one of the key misconceptions sometimes about trans people and trans children is that they're stereotypical. They only, so it's, oh, you must like Barbies, you must like dolls, you must like pink dresses. But often I think what happens with trans children, which is not just Sasha, which you've just said that her mother is saying the same thing, is that once they're allowed to embody their gender identity and, and to socially transition, is they don't rely on pink or um, wearing the girliest clothes anymore because they're seen for who they are. And I think that's that's something that seems to be very consistent. So it's really interesting that's happened and I hope they go well. I was going to ask you one final question because we've got very little time, was that obviously we we barely spoke about it, but I earlier today watched um, Wild Side, your, your first film about um, uh, trans people or transsexual people and um, you have now for almost 20 years um, been very compassionately making films about a group of people that don't get depicted very compassionately <laughs> in media or in cinema or in film. Do you think that you would want to make another film that touches on trans issues and if so do you have any sense now about what you would want to look at next as an aspect of the transgender experience? Well, actually, the, the next documentary I'm going to do, it's about a, a trans uh, story. And but I can't tell you exactly. Okay, good. It. <laughs> it's going to be in the States. Uh, I was supposed to go there in October to do the shooting, but um, we were not allowed to do it because of the COVID. Um, so so we had to postpone uh, the shooting to next year. But but definitely the my next film will be about a trans story. Okay, that's great. Well, that's that's fantastic news. Exactly what I wanted to hear. Um, no, thank you very much, Sebastian. We have to kind of end it there because these these things run out always very quickly. Um, so I just want to say thank you again, um, both for making a beautiful film uh, and one I hope that everyone who maybe is tuned in but hasn't watched it yet will actually go on to watch. Um, and thank you again, Sebastian Lifshitz. Thank you. Little, thanks. Little Girl is, is showing now at Curzon Soho in Bloomsbury and is also available to stream uh, on Curzon Home Cinema. If you have watched the film and you enjoyed it and this event, please tell your friends. Um, upcoming in the Curzon living room, we have on Monday, the 28th of September at 8.30, director Channing Godfrey Peoples will be in conversation about her new film, Miss Juneteenth, with journalist Amon Wallman. And on uh, Monday, the 5th of October, Craig Roberts and Sally Hawkins will be talking about their collaboration in Time of Beauty with writer Ian Hayden Smith. You can follow Curzon Cinemas on Twitter and Facebook for all the latest updates. I've been your host tonight. My name is Sean Fay. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean Fay. Uh, I am a writer, editor, and presenter. And my first book about transgender issues called The Transgender Issue will be out next year, September 2021, with Penguin Books. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.